In a recent video, I showed you how to make this primitive survival bow. This is a great bow that was made out of green ocean spray wood. It was made out of a single stick that still has the bark all along the back of it. It's a very ancient style bow that has flat limbs that taper into a, a thin, wider tips out here. And I like shooting this bow. I got a lot of questions from people asking how do you make a uh, bowstring out of all natural material. I've already done a few videos on all natural bowstrings. I've done one out of flax that I grew in my garden, a very ancient grain used for fiber, and also on hemp. Um, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a primitive bowstring out of back sinew. This is the tendons from a deer. I shot this deer last fall with a World War II rifle. Uh, I took my boy on his first hunt. And when I shoot a deer, I use every part of the animal I can. And part of that is the tendons or the sinew, both from the legs and the back. This is basically uh, the primitive version of duct tape that you can use for so many different things. The scraps of sinew, you can boil down with the hide and make glue from it. Uh, you use the fibers to wrap your uh, fletchings of your arrows and uh, to mount the arrowheads, the stone points onto your arrows. You can glue this onto the back of a bow and actually add a lot of power to a bow. A lot of primitive and Native American style bows had sinew backing on it. And you can make a bowstring. So we're gonna make a bowstring out of this sinew. Just to give you a rough refresher, I'm gonna go back and show you what the sinew looks like when you harvest it from a deer. We'll go to the back straps when I was butchering it and I'll show you how to uh, remove this. Once you have the final wet sinew removed from the meat, you just hang it to dry. And as it dries, it will turn this hard, almost amber, uh, clear color. And if it's uh, kept away from moisture and you removed all the fat on it, it will store pretty much indefinitely. I have this for years and years and years, and the sinew doesn't rot. And uh, when you have a, a primitive project, you can simply take some fibers out. So we're going to show you how to tease the fibers out now, and then moisten them, and then twist them. We have our dry back sinew here and we're ready to start teasing out the fibers to make our bowstring. You can see lines running along the length of the sinew. That just shows you how long these fibers are. The individual strands can just be pulled away like this from the edge and uh, pulled down. The ones on the edge are shorter and as you go the middle they run the whole length of the back sinew. So you just start grabbing the edge there. There's a kind of clear membrane that holds them all together. But if you just pull them out you can tease out these fibers. And uh, that's about the right size for a bowstring. So I'm going to continue to pull our sinew fibers out and uh, then I'm going to moisten them. I'm going to put this in the creek and uh, let them plump up. You'll see it go from a clear amber color to more of a white color and they'll be nice and pliable and easy to work with. A traditional method if you don't have water is to just put it in your mouth and chew the uh, sinew fibers and they'll become pliable as well. But let's put these in the creek and get them working so we can start our bowstring. Now that our bundle of back sinew fiber has been moistened and it's soft and pliable, we're ready to start twisting it into our bowstring. And to begin, we start the upper loop that will fit around the bow knock. Now what I've done is because these are pretty thin, I'm going to do four strands on the top and four on the bottom. If they're thicker, you can go down to two, but keep in mind that when this absorbs water, it expands quite a bit and when it dries, it shrinks and we don't want our bowstring too thin. We want it able to handle the pull of our bow because it's pretty heavy. So you take the four strands in two bundles, so you have eight total and then you pinch them together and then do a simple overhand twist like this. You can see it's kind of twisting. Once you have all the sinew twisted together to the point where you can fold it over and have the size of loop you want to fit around your bow knock, we're ready to start twisting the bowstring. You know, now there are eight strands coming off this side and eight coming off this side. Divide those into two groups of four, just like that on both sides. And what you want to do is you want to match up one group from this side with one group from this side right there. Kind of hard to see, but uh, you do that and then do another overhand twist. And by twisting tails from the opposite sides here, that will really secure that loop and hold it into place and then we can start twisting our bowstring. So that's all twisted together. We line up these from the opposite sides on this and they're kind of loose, but you just give them a good twist. So you can see the tails on this side are twisted together and this side we have our loop locked into place and we're ready to start doing our two ply twist along the bowstring. I just do a simple overhand on this side, 
simple overhand on this side and what that does is that motion makes it want to twist on itself do that again twist twist and that's how simple it is to start our bowstring just a simple overhand twist and then a major twist there and if these dry out too quickly you can just uh, moisten them a little bit more and they'll be good to go now eventually we're going to get to these tails and run out of sinew and before you do that what you want to do you can see some of the shorter ones uh, that we staggered are about to run out we're going to start feeding in new sinew fibers and this two ply twist is so secure that uh, this whole bowstring will hold together and be a really great bowstring overhand overhand like that now I'm just going to take some new sinew fibers uh, just one at a time and start feeding them in here with the bundle and as one uh, end of the sinew from the initial loop ends we got new ones in there and we can make this bowstring as long as we want and as you twist it together it will hold those new bowstrings in place and become part of the whole bowstring and you can see we already have a start of a really strong and great bowstring let's keep feeding fibers and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's appropriate length I've been twisting our bowstring for a few minutes and you can really start to see it taking shape we have that loop there just working down and starting to get some length to it now keep in mind as this is drying you're gonna to want to keep twisting it and stretching it periodically to make sure it has that twist that's tight holding everything together and uh, we'll let this dry after we finish adding more strands to the full length so I'll show you what that looks like after I'm done adding all our sinew fibers to make an over five foot long bowstring here's what our completed sinew bowstring looks like after we've twisted it to length and then let it dry for a night on this end we have our loop that we made and on the other end I just did a simple overhand knot to tie those loose fibers. You might be wondering how we'll put this on the bow if we only have a loop on one knock and not the other. And what we're going to do is do a knot called a timber hitch. It's also called the bowyer's knot. It's a great knot because it will hold securely when you're putting it on your bow but it's easy to loosen and adjust the length. Now sinew bowstrings do uh, expand and contract with humidity so it's good to have this bowyer's knot on one end versus a double looped bowstring because you can adjust it easily. To do the bowyer's knot what you do is you take uh, your end of your bowstring that has the uh, overhand knot on the end and then you fold it over so that the uh, loose ends underneath and then it comes back around and what you have is a little loop there and then you just come in that and go around two times or three times and uh, that will be a very secure knot that way that you can pull this tight and uh, it will hold in place on that knock and then you can adjust it to whatever length you need for your bow so a very simple knot to do and uh, a good one to know for any archer so I have the lower bow knock and the way I made this primitive bow you can see that this side of the knock is actually thicker than this side the reason I did that is because the knot is thicker so you put this around and uh, you can see that fits quite well that twist there is a little wider fits that knock and then that's thinner and fits that one strand and again you can adjust this to whatever length you want you just have the loose end here and then we'll string it up so that the loop is on the other knock so here's what our completed bowstring looks like on the bow we got our upper loop just wrapped around that knock there goes along the length that really nice strong double twist and then on this side we have our loose end with the bowyer's knot. I'm gonna get some primitive arrows and let's go shoot this bow and just show you how uh, effective this primitive technology, this ancient style bow, will work on uh, shooting arrows. So we have our sinew bowstring on our primitive ocean spray survival bow. Also made a primitive arrow out of wild rose. Has a blunt end on it, it's perfect for hunting small animals. I love being able to go in the woods with just a few tools and making an entire bow and arrow set that would be great for hunting small animals such as rabbits or squirrels. And if you practice enough with this gear and uh, you can become a good enough shot, you can even kill a bird out of the air. That bow shoots really well. 